Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Reed, Juris Doctor, Small Business Development, IT, and Marketing Guru from sunny Victoria, BC. Follow me for new podcasts on beginner business and investing as I survive, grow, and prosper in a post-COVID Canada. Welcome to my latest podcast, the first steps for new investors of any age, as long as you have at least $200 and you can continuously skim some money from your budget in order to pay yourself first. Thank you all so much for the listening and the support. Get real-time news on my Instagram at Canada Stock Market. At Canada Stock Market. Disclaimer, my podcast and YouTube content offer very generalized information that has been beneficial to me, but always do your homework. Make sure that any moves you make are truly in your own personal best interest. Nothing in my content constitutes advice of any kind, and continuing to listen constitutes acceptance of this disclaimer in its entirety. So you got that $200 in hand and you're ready to start paying yourself like the wealthy people do, knowing that your money will be out there working hard for you. The first thing you need to do is to get a bank account if you don't have one already. And I don't mean just a regular bank account. I mean a TFSA or an RRSP. These are tax sheltered accounts. I go into the more in my other episodes, and you can get a lot of detailed information on exactly what they are. But basically, you will need one of these at first because until you exceed the amount that these accounts uh, will allow you to add to, then you need to take advantage of Canada's two amazing tax-sheltered bank accounts. So to get these, first you'll have to pick which bank you want to use. I personally use TD Bank. It costs $9.99 for uh, commission fees whenever I buy or sell a stock, which is pretty steep um, compared to a lot of apps out there and compared to the United States. But I do love their web broker platform. And uh, once you reach a certain amount in your account, they no longer require a minimum level of transactions. So I've picked TD Bank. I've also heard that uh, Tangerine, which is an online bank, is offering interest on the balance in your TFSA, as well as um, they may have had reduced cost trading. I'm not exactly sure, but it's another one that you can uh, look into. That's at uh, Tangerine. So uh, choose your bank account, TD Bank or Tangerine, and then contact them and meet with that bank's financial advisor and discuss the best option for you. So they will talk to you and find out about you, find out whether a TFSA is the best way for you to start or an RSP. It uh, really depends on how much income you're making, how old you are, and uh, what you're uh, attempting to do with these particular uh, savings and investments. One thing I'd like to add about why I picked TD Bank, it's Because I have low-cost checking and savings accounts there and a TD Bank credit card, so I can easily transfer funds into or out of my TFSA or my RRSP with just a few clicks. So it makes sense for me. You may find that uh, wherever, whatever bank that you have your checking and savings account in um, does offer these accounts, these TFSA and RRSP accounts. And so if that's the case, then do your research and make the decision that benefits you the most. So let's say you've chosen the TFSA at TD Bank. You've got $200 in your TD Bank checking account and you transfer it over to your TFSA for free with just a few clicks. Then what? Sounds like it might be time to make that first purchase to get your feet wet. And my thought here is start with a simple purchase that is relatively low risk and that pays you for owning it. In other words, a dividend paying ETF. A dividend is when 
the stock will pay you for owning that stock. This can take place every month or it can take place every uh, quarter of the year. But either way, a dividend may, means that they pay you and this dividend is not guaranteed. An ETF basically means a group of stocks that trade as one stock. They have a manager. This manager takes a small cut from, from the price of the stock. Um, and they're usually screening blue chip stocks. So these are companies that have been around for a long while. They've shown a consistent history of growth and dividend paying ETFs also favor companies that have a history of strong dividend increases. So they start by paying a certain amount per share and this number has gone up because the company is doing well. And so these people have gathered a group of these dividend paying stocks that are, are growing and are consistently paying dividends and they are managing this for you and you just buy it and let it sit and let it grow and let it continue to pay you. Dividend ETFs are generally recommended for investors that want the lowest possible risk, but they're looking to produce some income. They want to get paid for owning these stocks. Um, so this may be for investors that are approaching retirement or who are already are retired looking for investing a lot of portfolio, but I think it's also good for a beginner again, so that you can start to get your feet wet and learn your own risk tolerance. Uh, speak with the financial advisor. If you have any question, always do your homework for investors hoping to keep more of their hard earned money in their pockets. ETFs are pretty attractive. And this is according to an advisorsavvy.com article. Um, the expense ratios are lower for ETFs than, say, a mutual fund where you also pay a management fee. A uh, good dividend ETF choice can save you time and effort. You don't have to research the individual stocks, but even better, you're not exposed to the risk of owning an individual stock. So when you own a group of stocks, basically one might go up, one might go down. Overall, they're most likely going to go up um, either as well as the market or better. So now we will talk about some of these dividend paying ETFs that I am a big fan of, basically based on their low management fees, the stocks that they've included in their group of stocks, and the amount of dividends that they pay. So these are something that you may want to write down just because if you're going to make that first trade, then you'll need to know this, uh, this name of this ETF, which I will give you here. So the first one I'd like to talk about is iShares Core S&P Composite High Dividend Index ETF. All that doesn't really matter. What matters is, and this is what you should write down, TSXXEI. So that's TSXXEI. So this fund um, has uh, long-term growth goals and invest in Canadian companies across different sectors and it pays out uh, a monthly dividend, which is nice to get the, to see that money coming in every month, especially when you're new is just nice. It has one of the lowest management fees. Uh, it has $572 million in assets and it will give you a yield of, or it currently has a yield of 6.31%, um, which is a very strong yield. So on, um, on $200, you could look at about $12 annually, if my mental math is correct there. Um, so TSX XEI has a high concentration in financial and energy sectors. Um, but one of the others that I would uh, like to look at is, and recommend in this case for this purpose, is BMO Canadian Dividend ETF. So this is TSX ZDV, TSX ZDV or ZDV, depending on where you're from. So this particular group of stocks, this ETF has net assets of 425.91 million. And it's better for investors with a slightly higher risk tolerance, but either way, it's still compared to a regular stock, it's still a very, um, 
a lower risk way of going about your first trade for sure. Um, this ETF is designed for investors looking for both income and growth in their portfolio. And any good dividend paying ETF should be looking for both income and growth in the portfolio. So this, uh, this fund TSX ZDV uh, primarily holds stocks from financial and energy sectors. And when they're choosing these stocks, they're looking at those dividends growing um, and the amount of dividends that they're getting. Now, this one has a slightly higher management fee than uh, TSX XEI, but it's um, and a slightly lower annual distribution yield. Uh, still, it's uh, quite reasonable. It includes Power Corp of Canada stocks, uh, TD Bank, Bank of Nova Scotia, CIBC, Royal Bank, Bank of Montreal, um, Manu Life Financial. I mean, these are the big ones. These are consistently paying. So this is a very uh, strong ETF to get into. Okay. Now let's talk about that actual first trade. So again, I'm going to presume that you're in TD Bank and your financial advisor or whatever bank you're using and tell you exactly how to do this if you're using some other bank. But uh, with the um, TFSA in TD Bank, and even if it's an RSP in TD Bank, here's the steps you need to do to make that trade from your phone app. So you open your phone app and you click on your TFSA and it brings you in there. You'll see these little circles across the top, trade, orders, securities transfer. In this case, we want to do a trade. So let's say that you have that uh, $200 in there and to take a look and see what that uh, ETF is trading for. So we're going to say that you have chosen TSX XEI, for example. So I'm just going to pop that into Google. And the first result that comes up is telling me that it's trading right now for $24.09 a share. And even better, it's down by $0.07 cents today. When you're long-term investing, uh, the, many people agree with this, buy the dip. If you're doing day trading, you don't necessarily want to buy the dip. In fact, you want to avoid that. But in this case, we're thinking long-term. We're buying something that's going to constantly just be working out there, giving you more money. So here it is. It's on a, on a dip for the day, and um, it's been holding pretty steady over a five-day period. All this is coming just from the chart on that first Google result. And we can get more into that later, but even if you buy it on a slight uptick, it's going to be okay because the whole point of this particular stock, this group of stocks, is that in the long term, it's going to go up more. So anyway, we're at uh, $24.09, and we have $200. We're with TD Bank, so we have to pay a $9.99 commission fee, which means we have $190 to work with. So we need to see how many shares we can get for that 190. So we're going to divide that by the stock price. So dividing 190 by $24.09, we have 7.88, which means we can get about seven shares of, of this ETF. So if you had more money, then you could uh, get more. And that, that's recommended, especially on a, on a $25, uh, nearly $25 stock. Um, but in this case, we have $200. We want to see how this whole thing works. And so um, we've calculated, calculated we can buy seven shares at this current price. So we're... Um, so we're back in the app. We're looking at that big circle trade button, and that's uh, what we're going to click there. So clicking on that trade button, we can see uh, the TFSA. It shows you how much cash you have available. Um, this cash you have available means actual cash in that account, which you can use for trading. The order type is stocks and ETFs, practically the same thing. That's what we're going to do. And then when we... Um, Click on enter name or symbol to select the stock. And we're going to just type in XEI, just what you've uh, written down there. And you'll see it come up with a little Canadian flag. And that's exactly what we want. So press it. And it shows you XEI and the current price. Under action, we're going to select buy. Under quantity, we're going to put seven because that's the, uh, that's the amount that we have there. Um, we're going to leave the price at market for now and good till day. All that stuff is fine. 
eventually you'll get into more advanced features here, but just leave it as is. You're just going to buy seven at market good till day. At the end of this, you'll go to the bottom. You'll see preview order. Press that. And um, at this point, it will let you confirm uh, whether you want to make this trade. And if you do confirm it and uh, within a couple minutes, those stocks will uh, or that ETF in this case will be in your uh, in your holdings. And so you will actually be a part owner of this group of companies. So you're technically a part owner of all those uh, companies individually. Congratulations. So if you want to uh, check and take a look at that uh, beautiful new ETF or what other, whatever other stock you've purchased, uh, simply go back into your TFSA account and take a look under the holdings tab and you will see it there. Uh, they don't recommend that you check it daily. Um, it's going to sit there for a long time. This is an investment. You're not a day trader. You will see it fluctuate. Sometimes it will show red. Sometimes it will show green over a long enough period of time. Uh, most likely that'll be in the green. If it's anything like the stock market has been for the entire history of the stock market. So uh, congratulations again if that's a decision that you made. And if you decided to do some more research, make sure that this, this is the best fit for you and in your best interest, then even better. I know there have been a lot of disclaimers in this episode, but that's because I want to make sure you doing you are doing the specific right thing for you with your first steps in Canadian investing. So this will go ahead and conclude my fifth podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Catch me on Instagram at Canada Stock Market at Canada Stock Market, and stay tuned on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, more podcasts. There are so many topics to cover, especially in Canadian business and investing that haven't been covered. Um, so wish you the best and see you soon. For up-to-date news and content, follow me on Instagram at Canada Stock Market, at Canada Stock Market. Add the Canadian Financial Survival Channel to your list of weapons. Subscribe, like, win. win. win.